Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to use reduction to show that a problem is MP complete. We're going to be looking at the click decision problem. A click is a subgraph of a graph that is a complete graph. Now let me show you what a complete graph is. On July 2nd, 2008, I was born as a Morris, a special breed of a mermaid and a horse. Ever since then, I live in a happy family with my mom and dad. Over the years since I was a small Morse, I developed a fun, loving relationship with both of my parents. If I live in the world of graph theory, mathematicians would have called this diagram, which represents our relationship, a complete graph, where I am connected to both of my mom and dad. In fact, all of the members within my family are connected to each other. Then on July 4th, 2012, my sister was born. She immediately bonded with the family the moment she came into being. We rearranged our old furniture, bought new ones, and made room for her in our small rectangular house. Just like before, mathematician would have called this new diagram, which represents my family, a complete graph, because all of the members within this family are connected to each other. Then on July 8, 2016, my grandpa called my dad to say that he would like to live with us. I liked my grandpa, but I could not communicate with him because he only spoke Swedish. I remember one Christmas, he called me and said, who added? I could not reply to that because I didn't speak his language. Despite the fact that my sister and I both couldn't communicate and connect with our grandpa, our dad agreed to have him join our family. Now, after he moved in, our family relationship was different. It felt a bit strange because my sister and I couldn't connect with our grandpa due to our language barriers. The new graph that represents our family looks like this, and mathematician would no longer call it a complete graph. However, there is a subgraph or a small part of this graph that is complete. Now that part of the graph is called a clique. A clique is a subgraph of a graph that is the complete graph. Okay, now that we talk about what a clique is, I want to highlight the important distinction between an optimization problem and a decision problem. If the clique problem was framed as an optimization problem, then we would be asked to find a clique of maximum size in a graph, where the size of a clique is the number of vertices it contains. However, as a decision problem, we are asked to decide whether a clique of a given size k exists in the graph, meaning give a yes or no answer. Let's take a look at this problem. The clique problem written in formal language is the following. The curly brackets represent the set of solutions which satisfies the language. This part is the encoding of an input graph and a number k that represents the size of the clique. We want to show that the click decision problem is MP-complete. To do this, we need to show two things. First, we need to show that the click is MP-hard, and then we need to show that the click is in NP. Show that click is MP-hard. For this step, we're going to choose an already known MP-complete problem to help us do a reduction. It would be a good idea to be familiar with a variety of different kinds of known MP-complete problem because that will make the process of reduction easier. For this video, we're going to use 3CNF satisfiability formula. You can think of a 3CNF satisfiability formula as a machine that gives yes or no as answer. And using the features of this machine, create a new machine that gives the same answer under various circumstances. The 3CNF satisfiability machine is the Boolean formula, and CNF stands for conjunctive normal form. We're going to call this machine 3 set for the rest of the video. Here is an instance of 3 set, and let's call this formula phi. Notice that each of the clauses are connected by the logical n symbol. Within each clause, there are exactly three literals connected by the logical OR symbol. The bar symbol on top of the literal represents its negation or complement. 
We start the reduction algorithm with an instance of a three-step formula and construct a graph G such that phi, the formula, is satisfiable if and only if our new graph G has a clique of size k. First, for all of the clauses, we draw a triple of vertices like so. I have named the size of our graph A, B, and C just to make it more clear for us to see where the clauses are represented on the graph. For the edges, we're going to add them to our graph in the following manner. We put an edge between two vertices if the vertices are not from the same clause and they are not the negation of each other. Our last important step is to prove that phi is satisfiable if and only if G has a clique of size k. Since this is an if and only if statement, which means that we need to prove implications on both directions, there are three clauses. So the question we are going to ask or decide for our graph is, is there a clique of size 3 on the graph? Before I give the formal proof, I would like to build some intuition for this proof by highlighting some interesting features and properties of the construction of this new graph. If we look at phi, we can see that the clauses are connected by the n symbol. And this means that in order for the formula to produce a 1, all of the clauses must evaluate to 1. If the result of phi is 0, then we know at least one of the clauses evaluated to 0. Also notice that inside each of the clauses, the literals are connected by the OR symbol, which means that one of the literals which holds the value 1 would make the entire clause 1. So what is an obvious assignment for the variable that would make phi 0? We can make x1 0, x2 bar 0, and x3 0. Basically make all of the literals in class 1 0. Now, we can also check another case where the formula does give a 1. We can make x1 0, x2 bar 0, and x3 1. Since x1 is 0, then x1 bar is 1. Similarly, since x2 bar is 0, then x2 is 1. The question becomes, is there a clique of size 3 formed by x1 bar, x2, and x3? The answer is yes and it is highlighted on the graph. We can do this in the other direction as well, by picking out a clique of size 3 on our graph, from side B to A with x1 bar connecting to x2 bar, then from side A to C with x2 bar connecting to x3, and finally from side C to B with x3 connecting to x1 bar. Notice that for the second clique, when we are on x2, 2 bar on side A, it was impossible to connect to x1 because x1 would not connect to x1 bar on side B, which is our third edge that is required to form a clique. In addition, x2 bar connect, connect to x2 because they are the negation of each other. This means that x2 bar on side A must connect with x3 in order to form a clique. Since in this clique we used x1 bar, x2 bar, and x3, the values for these literals will be set to 1. This means that x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, and x3 equals 1. Inputting these values into our original Boolean formula, we will see that the result will be 1.
You can pick other cliques and try this yourself as practice. I'm going to write out the formal proof for this in the next video because this video is getting really long. You can check out the next video if you're interested. But this is the basic understanding and intuition for the if and only if statement that we are supposed to prove. Our final step now is to show that click is in NP. In order to do so, we need to give a polynomial time algorithm to verify its certificate. We use a set of vertices V prime in the clique, which is a subset of the vertices of V in G as certificate. Then we check in polynomial time whether V prime is a clique by checking if for each pair U comma V, which is a pair of vertices in V prime, the edge for U and V belongs to the set of edges E in G. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope that you find it helpful and I'll see you next time.